<clears throat> How are we doing? This is Fox again for Sound Design Tutorials. This is the second part in the deconstruction of my uh, 150 BPM hard trance track using only Synthmaster. This is the second pluck. I did two plucks, a super saw-ish lead, a pad and a trance gate, a bass and a sub bass. So yeah, in the first one I covered just a basic pluck, which was this. Called it an echoey pluck for main reasons. It's really heavily delayed and reverbed. This is the one we're going to be going over today, slightly different. There's a lot more movement in this pluck and it's a lot lower down uh, simply because I've pitched the the layer voice down one octave from the rest. It was exactly the same MIDI clip as Pluck 1. I've just pitched it down one octave just to make it a little bit more lower and it didn't clash with the first Pluck. The movement that we're getting is from this vector oscillator. This gives you the chance to put four different waveforms in each four of these boxes and then you can modulate these XY indexes to sort of spin it around as the uh, as the tune's playing really. The LFOs are free running and it's synced so the LFO keeps moving while it's plucking in and out of the different uh, waveforms. So yeah, quite a bit to do on this one so I'm going to go ahead and create a new instance of this preset. Starts off on a basic waveform and a sawtooth by default. I only use one oscillator for this and this is oscillator one. I did use filter one so we'll turn that on as well. As I say, the type of oscillator that I used for this was a vector. Right, we'll go ahead and set up all four waveforms first. The first one I used was just a basic sawtooth, which it comes on as standard. I always change these to semitones because it's easier for me to work with. I had all of them on one semitone, so they was all in the same note. Um, oscillator 2 or this second box wave 2 was one of the profit waves it was profit 605 that's in these single cycle waveforms profit 605 this one down here I chose was another one of those single cycle waveforms it was a bulker modular 2 I ain't got a clue what half of these are, I just chose them at random and keep playing around with them until I find one that I liked. This one is a simple triangle wave. So we've got all four of the uh, waves set up. We're going to set up modulation now to do that. Uh, we'll go ahead and set these voif, uh, synth voices up first. So as I say, I pitch this one down one octave. It was one octave and one semitone, just to get it sitting right in my mix. Uh, I didn't do much. I spread the DJ into plus 10, and I pushed the cut off round of these new voices to about 30. Obviously, you need to turn the unison on, and I had it on five voices. Right, we'll go ahead and we'll set the pluck up first before we get uh, the LFO doing all the modulation. So envelope one, I kept it pretty much as it was as standard, except I'd give no no sustain, push the decay around, so it's just been a leaf of the Y. We're going to do some modulation on the filter envelope as well to help give it a bit more pluckiness. Um, so right click on the cutoff, modulation source, voice, I always use ADSR envelope 2 for this. You're getting a routine of using certain envelopes for certain things. Um, and I modulated it positive from its original cutoff position to almost maximum, about plus 100. As close to a plus 100 as you can get. Whatever you're modulating, it tells you up here in this box here the amount you're doing, if you hover over it. That's on 104 at the minute, that'd be fine. I'm on the wrong one, actually. It'll be on this. And the cutoff, I had it about just before 9 o'clock. Okay. 
that envelope is whipping this cut off round over the attack time specified in envelope two, which we're going to set up now. It's a lot like the first envelope. Pull the sustain all the way back. Decay, pretty much the same, just underneath the Y. Okay, we're going to set these LFOs up now to modulate this X on the Y index. We're going to set the same LFO to do this on this one and this on this one. But because they're going to be alternate, starting at alternate points, it's going to swing it around in a circle like this. So yeah, you want to set it right at about there, about a fifth of the way in from the top and a fifth of the way in the bottom from the left. And then right click on the Y index, modulation source, synth, LFO 1 is what I use, which is one of the master LFOs up here. Do the same for this, modulation source 1, synth, LFO 1. We'll set the destinations for this before we go ahead and uh, assign what we want the LFO for it to do. So wave index 2, I had to the left just before a quarter of the way. I'll select a 1 wave index and the opposite just before a quarter to the right. We'll go ahead and set this LFO up now. As I say, I always sync it. I synced it, kept it on 4 over 1, so it's going to set 4 beats for it to do a cycle. Keep it on a sine wave so it was nice and smooth. That's it. That's all I did with the LFO. Didn't change the phase, the noise, or anything like that. Okay, nice and simple, just a few effects to set up now. I used a couple of the insert effects inside the thing itself. I did use the distortion, which is in FX section one. Turned it on, kept the mix where it was as standard, gave it a bit of drive. I changed the shape of it slightly on the bottom end just to give it a little bit more bite. Just pushed this second box up so it was just above center. The other insert effects or effect I used was phaser. You can probably tell that. That's in number three. Turned it on. Give it a bit more space. Mod for the delay. I pulled down slightly. Phase ratio boosted and the feedback boosted ever so slightly. Just help give everyone a little bit more movement. Uh, I did use some effects in the master section as well. I used the echo and a reverb again. Same, pretty much same settings as what I had on the first pluck. So go to the master effects section. Set the echo up first. Synced it. Synced it. Didn't click the ping pong on. I set this one to one over eight, which is pretty much giving you a ping pong style effect anyway. The width was on the maximum. Pan was dead center. Feedback I set to about 2 o'clock and the drive to about 9 o'clock. EQ'd it in a bit, got rid of most of the lows, boosted it from the halfway point, distorted the delay as well, same sort of thing, just straighten the curb off at the bottom. OK, 
Okay, the reverb, we'll click ahead and turn that on. Turn a little bit of mix. Size I had round to about two o'clock. Boosted the time a little bit and the distance from the original position. Everything else I've kept pretty much as standard. I turned the early EQ on, boosted the highs slightly. And the late EQ I kept where it was. The sounds are the same but totally different which is what you want if you've got two plucks that occupy exactly the same space. The EQ and I did gave them their own space within the mix. So nothing too crazy, bit of sound change compression on them both just to duck them out of the way of the kick. I'll play them both now together. So that's pretty much it. Yeah, I think they work, work really well together, these two plucks. Uh, I'll generally do do two plucks when I'm doing hard trance. This is what I, in, I like to make, it's what I like to listen to. I always keep it pretty basic in my structure. I normally do a couple of plucks, a main lead, a pad, most of the time a trance gate sort of sound. And then just two basses. I like the breakdowns where there's not much there in my favourite parts of the track, something like this. just a pad, a pluck, the bass and the drums, nothing to it, about six tracks making that, so that to me is a nice pluck, real straightforward, so the next one I'm going to be going over is what I've called the super saw, which is this. Another really simple patch, nice and straightforward. Again, two basic waveforms, which are both sawtooths, as you would imagine. Massive voices, eight voices on each, all detuned. Another two units of voices detuned. An ensemble, which is a, like a chorusy effect, making it sound even wider. And then on the master effect, we've got a reverb. That's a really airy, nice super saw, that is. But yeah, that's for the next one. For now, anyway, make sure you check out my Facebook and Google+. Plus. It's Sounds Design Tutorials. If you enjoyed this or any of my tutorials, make sure you subscribe up here in the top. Any questions or requests about SynthMaster or any of the synths that I use, the best thing to do is hit me up on Twitter. It's at Sound Design Tuts. Okay, thanks for watching. Cheers.